All right, we're going to do the second part of lesson three in a worksheet named L2 in the file that I've named the Excel file I've named lesson underscore unit three underscore last name. My last name is Snar, so I use Snar. You should use your last name. All right. So the owner of a popular retail store majored in applied statistics in college and has conducted detailed analyses on the purchase amounts of her customers. Use Excel and standarddistributions.com to answer the questions below. The sample statistics are as follows. She has a sample mean of 31, a sample standard deviation of 8.7, a sample skew of 0 0.08, a sample kurtosis, it's actually excess kurtosis, of 0 0.14. And then 67.9% of purchases that are in the sample are within one standard deviation of the mean. 94.1% of the purchase amounts in a sample are within two standard deviations of the mean. And the 99.9% .9 of purchase amounts are within three standard deviations of the mean. What kind of distribution is the best choice here? If it was normal, it would have a kurtosis equal to zero. And again, this is excess kurtosis. So that being close to zero means, hey, maybe normal is a good choice. It also would have a skew close to zero. So both of these are pretty close to zero. And then according to the empirical rule, a normal distribution will have approximately 68% of observations within one standard deviation. I mean, that's pretty close to 67.9, really close. It'll have approximately 95% of its observations within two standard deviations. Again, that's pretty close. And then finally, nearly all, and 99.9% .9 is nearly all of the observations are within three standard deviations. So these are really close to their values in the empirical rule, which assumes normal. These two values are both really close to zero. And for a normal distribution, they would be zero. So we were going to pick, I think the appropriate distribution here is normal. Now to calculate the 99th percentile, we can use statdistributions.com. We're going to use the sample statistics because in reality, we can't know that this is normal. We can't know it's true mean. We can't know it's true standard deviation. But the sample statistics suggest it's normal. And we can use a sample mean and a sample standard deviation to approximate these values. To compute the 99th percentile, what we want to do is we want to make this left tail probability equal to 0.99. The mean is 31. The standard deviation is 8.7. And the probability of being between negative infinity and whatever this value is. And this value has to be such that the probability of being between it and negative infinity has to be equal to 0.99. And statdistributions.com has it at 51.24. The problem requires four decimal place accuracy, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna recompute this using Excel. So I'm gonna copy these numbers into Excel. Right here, text to column. I'm going to do delimited. Next, I'm going to click on other and I'm going to type a dollar sign. Finish. And then I can actually delete these two. Those two numbers help me assume that it's normal, so I don't need them anymore. Okay, so now I want to grab this right here. So we're going to complete this table to figure out what these values are. Uh, notice that these numbers, they're not being treated all as numbers. Strings are going to be formatted by default on the left side of cells. Numbers are going to be the right side of cells. So there's something wrong here. Let's find out what it is. We have a space to the left of zero here. Deleting that turns it into a number, right? We have a space to the left of 0 0.01. Deleting it converts it to a number. And then down here, we have a space to the left of zero. And we have a space left of zero, right? So now they're all numbers. And we can double check 
by going to home number and adding decimal places, right? So now these are numbers. Okay, so that's something you have to be careful of when you copy things in from a website. We want to calculate the 99th percentile. So the area under the normal distribution to the left of X1 equals 0.99. So what is X1? Well, statdistributions.com has it at 51.24, but we need four decimal places, right? So we know this value is going to be close to 51.24. We want to find a number on the number line that corresponds to an area under the curve equal to 0.99. So what do we want to use here? We want to use norm dot. Do we want to use dist or do we want to do inverse? If we do norm dot inverse, it's asking for the area under the curve. In this case, it's asking for the probability of 0.99. And it's also asking for the mean and is asking for the standard deviation. Statdistributions.com got 51.24. To four decimals, that is 51.2392. Two decimals, in fact, it's 51.24. Four decimals, it's 51.2392. I'm going to paste that right here. I'm going to replace that with it, uh, four decimal places, right? Now it wants to know what is the first percentile for customer purchases. So now the area under the curve is only 0 0.01 instead of almost all of it, right? So let's go back to statdistributions.com. We're going to change this to 0 0.01. This area is 0 0.01. The probability of uh, being less than the first percentile is 0 0.01, and that corresponds to a number on the number line equal to 10.76, right? But again, we want four decimal place accuracy. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to again use equal norm, norm.inverse. I'm using norm.inverse because I'm being given the probability, right? And then I have the mean, and I have the standard deviation. And this should be less than the mean, right? It should be substantially less than the mean. This is more than the mean. And this is less than the mean, right? The mean is 51 or 31, right? So to four decimal places, we have what? 10.7608. So really close to 10.76, right? Now we want a probability value. What is the probability that a randomly selected customer will spend less than $23? So we want this probability here, right? X is how much a randomly selected customer will spend, right? And we want the probability that that customer will spend less than 23. So here we're gonna type equal norm.dist, because this gives us the, the probability using a number on the number line. And the number on the number line is going to be 23. I'm going to put 23 right there, right? And then I'm going to do the mean. And then I'm going to do the standard deviation. And then I don't know why it does this, but it asks for the cumulative distribution. I've never, ever used false in this example in a continuous distribution in Excel. So I don't know why they ask you for this, but I'm going to type one for true. And this is going to be zero because we don't have anything in E5, right? We don't have anything in the box or cell E5. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to type 23, right? So you can call this X3 if you want. I'm going to make these yellow. And I'll put a border around them. Yeah, we got to change this to four decimal places. So this uses norm.dist because we're feeding a number on the number line, right? These up here use norm.inverse because we're feeding it a value under, an area under the curve, right? We have four decimal places here, right? We're going to put that there. Now let's verify that visually with statdistributions.com. So what we're saying here is the number on the number line is 23. 
and the area is 0.179. Well, that's to three decimal places. 0.1789 is one point or 0.179, right? So statdiffusion.com gives us the same number to three decimal places. Now we want to calculate the probability that X is greater than 32, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do X4 equal to, then I'm going to type a 32 here, okay? Now before I calculate this number, maybe what I'll do is I'll pull this over here, right? So I'm gonna calculate first the probability that X is less than 32. The probability that X is less than 32, we're gonna use norm.dist because we want the area under the curve, under the distribution. Then I'm gonna come over here to get the 32 and then I'm gonna come up and get the, the mean and then I'm gonna come up and get the standard deviation, right? And then I'm gonna type one for cumulative, right? So this is not giving me the answer. It's giving me the left tail probability. I want the right tail probability. So what I have to do here is I have to type equal one minus that number, right? So let's go over here at statistics.com and see what happens. I'm gonna change this to 32, right? So the left tail probability is 0.546, right? Well, that's 0.546 to three decimal places. But this is the probability of greater than 32. So I have to change this to the right tail probability. If this left side is 0.546 and the area of the two is one, the total area under the curve adds up to one, This, right? Then the right tail probability is one minus whatever this side is, right? Which is 0.454, which is equal to that, but to four decimal places. I'll hit enter, make sure I got everything right. What is the probability that a randomly uh, selected customer will spend $40 or more, right? So I'm going to copy this and pull it down. I'm going to change this to 40. I'm going to change this to X5. So this is going to calculate the probability that X is less than 40, right? With a mean of 31 and a standard deviation of 8.7. And this one represents true for cumulative. We want to know the probability that X is greater than 40, right? So X being greater than 4.15, right? To two decimal places, that is 0.15, right? The probability of being less than 40 is the left tail. The left tail is the probability of being less than 40, and that's 0.85, that value, right? But we want the probability that X is greater than 40, so we're going to change this back to right. So this agrees with that, but this is to four decimal places and this is to two decimal places, right? So let's copy this value here. Now we want the probability that a randomly selected customer will spend between 32 and $51. So I'm gonna do 32 and then I'm gonna do 51. We have two values of X, 32 and 51. So in order to do this problem, first we have to calculate the probability. We're gonna do two left tail probabilities. We need to calculate the probability that X is less than 51. So I'm gonna change this to 51 here. So the probability that X is less than 51 is 0.989. This is asking for the area that's to the left or to the right of my cursor here. So from here to there. So what we have to do is we have to subtract from this blue area, 0.989, we have to subtract off this blue area, 0.546. We're gonna use this formula. We're gonna calculate two probabilities here. We're gonna first calculate the probability of being less than 51, right? And we're going to calculate the probability of being less than 32. Okay, so this is the probability of being less than 32. This is the probability of being less than 51. So their difference is the probability of being between those two numbers. So that 
minus that. And we're going to do the same thing down here. So I'm just going to copy this down here and pull it down. I'm going to change this to 40. I'm going to change this to 23 because I want the probability that X is between 40 and 23. And I got that minus this. So now I got to edit this here. This is fine, right? The probability that X is less than 40 with a mean of 31 and a standard deviation of 8.7. And then I want the probability of being less than 23 in the blue box here, right? When the mean is 31 and the standard deviation is 8.7. So if we go back to statsdistributions.com, the probability of being less than 40 is 0.85. And then the probability of being less than 23 is 0.179 which is that to four decimal places, that difference is the probability being between the two numbers. So that's 0. 0.6706. The probability being between 51 and 32 is 0. 0.4435. Now, what are the customer's purchase amounts that define the interquartile range? So the interquartile range is the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. The third quartile is the 75th percentile. So the probability of being, uh, of X being less than the third quartile is 0.75. The probability that X is less than the first quartile is 0.25, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna copy this I'm going to paste it down here. This is going to give us our third quartile, right? Give us our third quartile. I'm going to move that from 99 down to 0.75. Again, the third quartile is the 75th percentile. I'm going to copy this, paste right here. Then I'm going to drag this 0.75 down to the 0.25. So our third quartile is more than our mean, our first quartile is less than our mean, which makes sense, right? Change that to four decimal places. So the interquartile range is the difference between these two numbers. This number that determines the upper limit of our interquartile range. Then we want this number, which determines the lower limit of our interquartile range. 